how good and how pleasant it is when God's people live in unity. Good morning and welcome everyone, whether you are watching online or listening on the telephone. I'm glad that you have joined me here. This is the week beginning Sunday the 16th of August and we begin our time of worship by singing together the hymn In Christ there is no east or west. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose grace is amazing, whose compassion never wavers, and whose mercy is as sure as the sun that rose in the sky this morning, we come, gathered in by your great and expansive love that assures us all of a warm welcome. For you are God, who made us each in your image, who loves us no matter who or where we are, and who through Jesus frees us for full living, longing that we might draw close, walk with you, and see and realise together your hope for the church, the world, us all. Eternal God, when we have drawn our circles small and have kept people out, when we have lacked compassion and turned people off, when we have forgotten your grace and mercy towards us and been unkind and cruel to others in our words, and when we have been judgmental, looking down on others, forgive us, we pray. And in this time of worship, turn our hearts, minds and wills around and back to you. Through your Spirit, search us and cleanse us, fill us and move us. Create in us clean hearts fit for service that speak of your great and expansive love for all. 
that we might glorify you in our living and reveal you in all our loving. May it increasingly be so. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This morning's reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 15, verse 10 to 28. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them, they are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. The Faith of a Canaanite Woman Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed at that moment. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Change is never very far away, is it? Whether it be the weather, or the sights and sounds in our garden, or the ever-changing COVID-19 guidelines, or the return of our young people to nursery and school this week. Change is all around us. 
Some of it is small. Some of it is quite momentous. And I'm sure that there was one change this week that got the attention of us all. After a public outcry, not least from the young folks themselves, the Scottish Government did a U-turn and upgraded the results of 75,000 pupils, awarding them the grades that their teachers had estimated. John Swinney said that he was sorry for the feelings of unfairness and that it was deeply regrettable that the government had got this wrong. It was a huge change, a welcome change, a U-turn that has brought relief and hope to many. And it is U-turns that I think is at the heart of our reading this morning. A few verses before our Bible reading starts today, we're told that Jesus is challenged by the Pharisees. They basically want to know why his disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. And Jesus uses this opportunity to challenge them and to say something quite radical. Basically suggesting that God's not so much interested or pleased by our outward rules and traditions, but much more interested in the motivation and the intentions of our hearts which are revealed to everyone in the things that we do and we say. And then we're told that Jesus leaves this place. And as he's leaving, he is met by a Canaanite woman, a Gentile, an outsider whose daughter is suffering terribly. In love for her daughter, she has sought Jesus out and is looking for his help. But Jesus says nothing. And then his disciples say to him to send this woman away. And his response is this. I was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. The woman by this stage is on her knees in a posture of worship and in desperation, pleading and asking for his help. And Jesus' response then is even more shop shocking, for he turns to her and basically calls her a dog. In many ways, this passage is troubling because Jesus does not respond or behave in the way that many of us would expect him to. So just what is happening here? Well, as you can imagine, much has been written about it. Some commentators suggest that with a twinkle in his eye and a smile on his lips, Jesus spoke these words and, and somehow that softens what he had to say. Others believe that Jesus was being deliberately provocative, that his words about dogs and crumbs at the master's table was actually part of a parabolic story and that he set up the opening verses knowing that the woman's faith was strong and that she would finish the story, making it clear that God's love was expansive and in it there was room enough for all. And there are some others that believe that this story reveals Jesus' humanity, that through the woman's persistence and boldness, Jesus was challenged challenged to rethink his own mission and came to see that it was bigger than he had first realised. This was a learning moment, causing Jesus to do a U-turn. Of course, it's up to us to decide what is happening in this story, but I think the end result is the same. As God draws the circle wider to include plenty of others that folks would ignore, look down on, or turn away. You know that we don't have to look far in our world to realise that there's plenty that divides us rather than unites. Every day people are discriminated against based on where they live, where they work, who they love, where they worship, and so on. But is any of this 
pleasing to God. God, who time and time again seems to challenge us and invite us into a bigger vision, challenging the smallness of our vision and our circles and saying, come into something bigger and wider and fuller than you could ever imagine. And so as we head into a new week, I wonder, is there any attitudes or ideas within us that need to change, that need to be repented of so that we might turn around? Do we need to do a U-turn on our understanding about who belongs in our country and our church? Do we need to do a U-turn on our understanding about who deserves help? Do we have to do a U-turn on our understanding about the environment and our responsibility to it? Do we need to do a U-turn when considering the future of the church? May we all think deeply be challenged boldly and turn around our ways to be pleasing to our God. Let us pray. God who is ever drawing the circle wider, knocking down and lowering walls and extending the table to make a place for everyone, we praise you for your unbounded love, your extensive mercy, your all-encompassing grace. And pray for those who need to see and know that today. We pray for families where relationships have broken down, where words have wounded, and where reconciliation and turnaround seem like an impossible dream. We pray for those who are scared and vulnerable, refugees fleeing war and persecution, crying out for mercy and help. And we pray for the grieving and the broken, the lost and the hurting, searching for hope and looking for a place to call home. For those who feel like they do not belong in society, in our country, in our church, and who long to be included, welcomed, valued and loved. God in the silence, Hear our prayers. God, who is ever drawing the circle wider, knocking down and lowering walls and extending the table to make a place for everyone. May we, your church, be humble. May you challenge any attitude, prejudice or narrow-mindedness within us that grieves you and turn us around and back to your way that we may look upon, treat and welcome others with that same unbounded love, mercy and grace that you have shown to us. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, who revealed those things to us and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, just a few notices. It's been a wee while since I have done that. A wee reminder that if anybody at all is in need of pastoral care, then please do not hesitate to be in contact. Indeed, if you know of someone else who's maybe ill or in hospital, please do let me know or your elder or, of course, Lorraine, our pastoral assistant, who returns from holiday later on this week. There's opportunities to join together, not least on a Sunday morning on Zoom, where you can either come online or phone in to Zoom as well and hear the chat that goes on there. It's a really nice opportunity to see faces and catch up and enjoy a time of fellowship. The password for that goes live on Facebook about half an hour before it happens, which is 11 o'clock for Dalmuir Barclay and 11.30 for waterfront and you're all very warmly welcome to come along to that and if you want any more information about that then please don't hesitate to contact myself or our session clerks Tom or Liz. For those who have continued to contribute to the work and life mission of our church not least through your weekly offering a big thank you to you all. Uh, there's different ways to donate, whether that be by cheque or standing order or your envelopes or by going on to the Church of Scotland website and donating through that. All contributions are very gratefully received. And last, but by no means least, I want to invite you to a week of prayer that has been initiated and is going to be led by our moderator. It's called A Place to pause and it's just that, a time of prayer for our country and for our church. Every morning, Monday through to Saturday, there will be a Bible reading and a reflection on YouTube and the Church of Scotland website and our own Facebook pages, which can be viewed throughout the day. And then at 8.30pm in the evening, we are invited to join with other Christians from across the church to come together and to pray very specifically for our church and for our country in these days. I think it's a great initiative. I'm very excited to be um, part of it this week. I invite you to do the same. I will be sending out emails um, with the password link to those whom we've got email addresses for. But if anybody else would like to have the password um, and the code for the Zoom meetings in the evenings, and please don't hesitate to be in contact and make sure that you are part of this and involved. But for now, we're going to sing our closing hymn, one that seems very pertinent in line with our reading today, and that is for everyone born a place at the table. Have a good week.
in peace and live out God's expansive love in all that you say and do. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and remain with you forevermore. Amen.